Hello gorgeous people, how are you? Today I'm talking about what the emissaries are seeing regarding the Great Awakening. I'll tell you all about it on the other side. So the emissaries were talking about their optimism and how happy they were with the Great Awakening. So I said to them, oh, what are you seeing? And they said, well, what we're seeing is that change is happening very quickly, much quicker than they were anticipating. Okay. What's interesting is that they don't have a timeline, like they, they can't see how it's going to pan out. They know the ending, as we said before, they know the ending, but they don't know the process. And what they're saying is that they're seeing the Great Awakening happening at breakneck speed. Okay. And I said to them, well, you know, lots of people don't see that. Lots of people aren't seeing that. And they said, well, whether they're seeing it or not, trust us when we say that what we're doing is measuring the energies, measuring the frequency, the vibration, and everything is speeding up. Everything is getting faster and faster. I certainly am seeing it. And I know it's probably my confirmation bias, but what the hell? I like seeing proof that the Great Awakening is happening. And I, I, I believe it's happening a lot, really quickly, really quickly. And what's it down to? Well, the emissaries say that it's down to the increase of the of the energies, the frequency that's happening. It's, it's increasing very quickly. And we are causing that as well, you know. I know we're being led by, the, there's a frequency that's gonna happen and change anyway but we can make it faster. The emissaries have always said that. We can speed it up, and it seems as though we are speeding it up by the very fact that we're paying attention to it. They said the other element to speeding up the Great Awakening is the stupidity of the baddies, because they are being very stupid at the moment. They're being very silly, and they're, they're making people wake up. They are forcing people to wake up. And they went on to talk about the way that people are changing in terms of how the vote. Now, you know, in the European elections, nearly all of the countries were voting in right-wing parties, right? Right-wing, and hey, left, right, it's a load of crap to me. But it's showing the way that people are thinking. People are starting to move to what is now being labeled by mainstream, lame stream, extreme right. The moving to extreme right. What is extreme right? Well, basically extreme right, as the emissaries put it, are people wanting to return to traditional values, putting people and our welfare first. That's not extreme right. That's just normal. It's just normal. Quite why, well, we know why they want to call it that, because anything that goes against their narrative is extreme right. That's what they, they do. They just call everybody. They, they, in fact, where we are now, where the baddies are, is that all, they, all they're able to do is to slur people, to call them names. That's what they do. They call them names. And they, they give them these titles, which are very bad. And people are very embarrassed. I watched a, um, an old couple two women, they weren't a couple, but they were just a couple of people, old, and she, the one woman was saying, I'm scared to even speak out now. What's happening with our society? It's becoming ridiculous with all this wokeism and all of that, and oh, I don't want to say any more, she said, but this is an old lady. And I take that as a good sign, that people are fed up. People generally are fed up, because it's one thing to have it on the mainstream, that that's how everybody should think. and. The assumption would be that that's how everybody thinks because that's what they talk about, but it's not. The majority are not thinking that way. So that brings me, leads me into the situation with politics at the moment. So in the UK, the Reform Party is now becoming a very big thing. It's, it's moving so qu quicker than any other political party has ever moved. Does that mean that I agree and I think that they're going to be the answer? No, not at all. Does that mean the emissaries think that they're going to be the answer? No. But what they said is that it's, it's a good measure of where people are. It's a good measure. Now, the bottom line is that the political structure is broken. It will never fix the problems 
it will never give us what we want. It will only give the politicians what they want, but we will never get anything from it. However, as an interim, and this is what the emissaries were saying, as an interim process, then it's part of this awakening that's happening. They've always said that the end result, the end um, governance will be self-governance. That will be where we govern ourselves, whether that be in small groups in, the, in our local area, but we will govern ourselves because we know a damn side, it's very clear now, we know a damn side better what we need than what politicians think that we need. They don't even think. I think politician and think, two words that don't go together, they're oxymorons. And I watched something the other day, I watched the, you know, the Millet guy from Argentina, but he was giving a speech here in, in Spain. He's a very educated guy, he's a very clever guy. And he's loved by Spanish people. However, he went to Madrid and he was with the, the president of Madrid, the, the, the woman who's in charge of Madrid. And he was out in the balcony and everybody was shouting and chanting and shouting libertad, libertad, liberty, liberty, yeah, over and over again. However, the television program station, news station, that is paid for by the government, said that he was booed. And so they showed an image of him and then they, they put the audio on of people booing him. Well, they didn't. They weren't booing him. They were praising him and shouting and giving him lots of good feedback. But that's where they are. They are so concerned about this coming, this coming of this new era in the BBC. Now, they've refused to have uh, the Reform Party as part of the debate. They've got all the other parties and all the little minor ones of 3%, 2%, but they won't have the Reform Party. So what that tells me is that they are shit scared of what's happening. They are very, very concerned because it's the power's being taken out of their hands. And what's interesting, what Millet was saying, he was talking about the, the, the way that governments go. And what, because he, he was saying that Argentina had a socialist government for a hundred years. A hundred years ago, Argentina was the richest country in Latin America and in many other, you know, compared to many other countries around the world. And now it's 157 in the list of poorest countries, you know, 157 down. And what he was saying was that socialism only destroys, it only ruins, it, it, it takes away, uh, it, it makes people poor, basically. And socialism has always been the precursor to communism. Socialism first, then communism. And then after communism, when people are fed up, then populism comes up, which is what Millet is. He's a populist, if you want, they've given him that name, populist. But that's the pattern that happens. Why? Because socialism is a disaster. It's a disaster. However, in the UK, they haven't had a socialist government. They've had a conservative government, supposedly, but it's done exactly the same as everything else. Why? Because politics is just a facade, isn't it? And behind that, we've got the whole uh, agenda that's going on. So it doesn't matter what government is in, they're just gonna follow the same agenda. But all of these new governments are coming in to power where they don't want that. They want something different. And they're getting very worried about it. And that's why they're pushing back against it. That's why the, the I mean, the hate in Spain, the media hates Millet. In the UK, the media hates the Reform Party. So all over, there's this hate and calling names and ignoring and acting as though they didn't exist. It's the same with uh, Trump in the, U in, in the US. The media hates him. They hate him. And they've hated him. And I've always used the premise, if the mainstream media, the lamestream media, hates somebody, that probably means that they might be okay. And if they love somebody, that probably means that they're not okay. That's it's just a little premise that I use. It seems to work very well. And so we're in really interesting times. And I'm going to go on to talk about what that means because I've got, you know, I, I've got no faith in politics. I know politics won't fix the issue. But the question is, 
some people are now saying, I don't know whether I should vote for reform. You know, by voting, am I just keeping the same system going or whatever, what should I do? And so in the next video, I'm gonna talk about this, is voting just gonna create stagnation? You know, a, a political party that gets in, that says that they're gonna do all of these things and then probably won't. But will that create just a stagnation? Will we not move forward? Okay, so I'll tell you all about that in the next video. I love you all and I'll speak to you all later. Bye-bye.